Welcome to the class, everyone. We're just waiting a couple minutes while everyone gets into the class. We're so happy you can be here today. Today is the 10th anniversary of I Love Yarn Day, and we're so happy that you could join us today where we're having 10 yarn classes in our Michaels online classroom. Um, this is our first class with the lovely Hattie from Premier Yarn. Um, I, uh, we have a little, a little something for you for joining us today. It's a little SVG file that says I love yarn on it. You can use it on your cutting machine to put on a mug or any kind of surface you would like. It's just a little extra something we wanted to give you to say thank you for coming today. Um, if you have any questions about the class today, feel free to put those in the chat. I will be looking at them and then answering them to Hattie as we go along. I will also be putting the pattern in the chat for anyone that needs it. And just as a reminder, this class is being recorded. So if you want to go back and rewatch it at any point, you can. Um, and with that, I'm going to hand it over to Hattie. Hi. Thank you, Stacy. Um, as Stacy said, I'm Hattie Townsend. I am Senior Creative Manager for Premier Yarns, and I'm Happy to be working in partnership with Michaels today for I Love Yarn Day. We're excited about it. Um, and I am teaching this class on a cute little crochet sheep. Um, and we are using for this project um, Loops and Threads Sweet Snuggles. Um, this is a great chenille yarn and he makes them so soft and squishy and um, your project will go really quickly. Um, so I'll just get started by going through the materials. So if you have your pattern, um, you can see um, just at the top, um, you're gonna start with one ball of Sweet Snuggles in white, and then one ball of Sweet Snuggles in black. Um, also some other things that will be handy to have are um, loops and threads, plastic needle, or any tapestry needle. Um, so it just needs to have an eye that is big enough to um, thread the chenille through. And once we get started, I'll show you a little bit more about that. Um, also today, you'll need a crochet hook. Um, I'm using a size MN, nine millimeter. Um, and one thing to note about that is that on your ball band for your sweet snuggles, you have some information about the yarn and you'll see that there's a recommendation here for a USP. Um, and you'll notice that we're using a hook size that is much smaller than the recommendation. And that's because we're going to be making a toy and it, um, it needs to be stuffed and you don't want the stuffing, stuffing to pop out. So you're gonna use this um, smaller hook so you get tighter stitches. Um, in addition to the hook, you'll also need some uh, fiber fill like this. And we'll use that to stuff. And then just a nice to have, it's not a requirement, but it is, handy to have for this chenille yarn, a little bit of fray check. Um, so that's the first thing I want to show you today. I'm just going to grab a skein of this yarn. So you can see, um, when you work with chenille yarns, what makes it really um, soft and fluffy and nice to work with is that texture. Um, and when you get your ball of yarn, the end has been secured. Um, but as you're working through your project, you will at some point, because you're joining a new color or you are um, um, weaving in ends or you're gonna change colors, you're gonna cut that yarn. And with chenille, the interesting construction means that sometimes those little bits of fluff on the end will start to come off. And that's okay, that's what makes this yarn really nice to work with, but there's a way to um, secure that. So as you're working, you don't have to worry about those bits of fluff 
falling off or any shedding on your finished project. So as I go, you're gonna see, I'm just pulling a little extra here. And in the construction of this yarn, there's a little binder cord in the center. I'll pull off a little more and you just wanna do that until you get to the point that you can see this little piece of thread. And then you can just simply tie a knot. And then you can trim that end. And then the way to make it even more secure is to just take a little bit of the fray check and to apply that onto the end of the chenille and let it dry. And then you don't have to worry about any of that shedding or any um, loose fibers coming through. It also makes it really easy to weave in your ends and secure it in your project later on. So that's a handy tip. Um, you can also just, if you don't wanna pull any of the extra off, you can just take the fray check and just dab a little on the end and that works too. Um, or you can just simply tie that knot on the end if you don't have fray check available. So, now that we know how to handle our yarn and how to weave in the ends, let's talk about um, the project. So we're gonna start with the first section um, under special stitches. And in that section, you'll see a note about magic ring. Magic ring is a great technique to use for um, crocheting toys because it allows you to start your project and get um, a, an opening that is not an opening, it's really closed and secure. So normally if you would do um, chain and join, you might get a little hole, but with the magic ring technique, you're able to start your project and have a secure start. So what you're gonna do is hold the tail in your hand and then you're going to wrap the yarn twice around your index and middle finger. And then you'll go in with your hook and pull up a loop. And then you have a ring in the center. See if you can see that here. So that's gonna be the beginning. And so we're gonna start round one by working into the ring we just made. So the next step in your magic ring is to yarn over your hook and then you're gonna pull through that first stitch. And so if I go back to my pattern, it says that round one starts with six single crochets in the ring. So I'm gonna work into that ring. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six stitches. And then once you've got six stitches, you're going to go back to that tail that you've had in the beginning and you're just going to give that a good tug. And then that's just going to close up the center of that piece. So you really don't have any space in there, any gap. And that is the beginning of our shape. So once you do that, you're ready to move on to the next round. So for the next round, um, we're gonna start with some increases. Um, but the first thing I wanna tell you about working this project is that you're not going to join every round as you go. You won't be joining into the first stitch with a slip stitch. You're going to be working this in a spiral. So you're gonna do, um, a continuous spiral as you go. So to mark the beginning of that, you wanna take a locking ring marker and you wanna just drop that into your first stitch and then you're gonna move that up as you go. So I'll start the next round. So the next round begins with 
two single crochets. So I'm going to make the first one in that stitch. And then I'm going to take my locking ring marker, just pop it into that stitch. And then the first one is completed. And then I'm going to work the second stitch into the same single crochet. So you just continue that around, working two single crochets in each stitch. Until you have um, 12 single crochets. And so I've completed one round. Okay, you see? Okay, so I'll carry on to the next round. And you'll notice as we do this, there's a pattern that develops in our increases. Um, so round three calls for us to work two single crochets in the single crochet, and then single crochet in the next. So I'm gonna take that locking ring marker out of that first stitch work my first of the two single crochets and then I'll take that marker and put it in the first and work the second stitch and then in the next stitch a single and then we're just going to repeat that all the way around so two singles and then one. So one of the things I hear about um, working with chenille yarns is it can be a little bit of a challenge to see where your stitches are. Um, the nice thing about these chunkier chenilles though is that you can really feel where the stitches are. So you'll notice as I go, um, it's maybe not so easy to see where your stitches are, but you can just even use your fingers to see the top of that B on the single crochet. So you can go two in. And then I can just feel for the next space and go into the next. Two more singles. One. And the other thing that's nice about this is if you happen to make a mistake, it's going to be really tough to tell. <laughs> so it gives you a lot of. Um, A lot of leeway to kind of do your own thing. Okay, so I'm gonna work the first stitch and just pop that in. So as you can see our little magic ring is still completely closed up. There's no hole there and our little circle is just getting bigger and bigger. So um, you continue to follow the pattern along working the increases um, as stated in the pattern. So as you go, you'll see um, in the next round, you'll work one single crochet and then two single crochets in the next. Oops. Hey, Hattie, we had a request. Would you mind moving the piece of paper so it's not white on white? It's a little hard yeah, to- sure, sure thing. better. Yes, that's perfect. Thank you. Okay. And then you're going to single crochet in each of the next two without increasing. Okay. So then you'll work two single crochets.
and then a single, excuse me, two in the same. And then one in the next, one in the next, and then two in the next. And you'll continue to follow that pattern around until you get to round 10. And round 10 is um, going to be what determines the width of the sheep. So at that point, you'll continue to increase and you'll have 60 stitches. And it will take you to something like this. So as you complete those increases, you see it gets wider and wider until you get to this point. Okay. So now I'll grab my hook. And this is another little tip. So when I have to put a piece down and walk away, I, um, take one of those locking ring markers, those removable markers, and just pop it into the stitch. And then when I'm ready to get back to work, I'll remove that marker and just drop the hook back in. So for the body, you see we've got most of the body here. We've completed our increases and we're ready to go on to the next piece. Um, and for this sheep, you're just going to work um, a few rounds without doing any um, increasing at all. So rounds 11 through 14, you're just gonna single crochet and each single crochet, and that's what gives him the, the width. So if you look at our sheep, you'll see that um, this is about the area where um, we finished up our increases, and then we have this section here in the center where we just work even. So this is an opportunity for you if you want to um, make your sheep a little bigger or a little longer and maybe not so round, you can add a few rounds here and just make them your own sheep. Okay, so carrying on. Um, because this has worked in one piece for his body, we've done our increases and we've gotten to the center. So now we want to decrease. So we get the um, other end of our little shape here that we're making. So I'm just gonna pull that locking ring marker out and I'm gonna pick up with round 15. So with round 15, I'm going to single crochet in each of the next four single crochets. Putting that marker in the first of those crochets. And then you're going to single crochet together over the next two single crochets. Um, and this is going to um, create a decrease. So as we go now, the end of our piece is going to get smaller and smaller. So our circle will, will get smaller and smaller until it is back to the same size as we had in the beginning. So to perform that single crochet two together, you're just going to go into the first stitch, pull up a loop, and then you're going to go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, and then you'll yarn over your hook and pull through all three stitches. And so you've taken one, two stitches and made one. And that's all there is to um, the decrease. And so you'll just pick up in your pattern and um, single crochet then in each of the next eight stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then we'll repeat that again. So we'll do single crochet two together over the next two stitches. You're gonna pull up a loop. 
and then go into the next stitch, pull up a loop, and then you'll yarn over your hook and pull through all three stitches. And then you'll just keep repeating that until you get back to the beginning. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then single crochet two together again. So into the first, pull up a loop, into the hey, next. Yes. We have a question. Yeah. So uh, I think that's Merlene asks, uh, when starting the magic ring, do you incorporate the tail as part of the SC in the ring or do you leave it hanging out? Um, you leave it hanging out just a little bit. It's okay to work over it um, because you're going to um, pull it later on. So you want to leave just enough that you've got something to hold on to. Um, if you look at my piece here, I've left about, about six to eight inches here on the end. And that's fine because you're going to work that into the inside. But if you leave a little bit of a tail and then you can um, work around some of it as you go around the loop, you'll get some of that back because you're going to be drawing that closed. So then you'll draw through all three stitches on your hook. So once you've mastered that single crochet two together, it's just simply a case of um, following along in your pattern and you'll single crochet together over two stitches where it's indicated and then you'll work a single crochet um, in the specified number. And as you do that, your sheep will start to take shape. He'll look, his body will look more like the little ball that you see over here and you'll be um, ready to close him up. Now, one thing to note is that because you're decreasing here, it's gonna get smaller and smaller and smaller. So there's a note in your pattern at about um, round 18, just after 18 that says, begin stuffing body with fiber fill and continue to fill as you decrease. Because as you decrease, it's gonna get smaller. So you don't wanna close your sheep up before you've put your stuffing in. So as you work, you can just take a little bit of the fiber fill and just drop it into the center. And then just continue to work, building that and stuffing that a little more as you go. And you'll just decrease until you get to the end. And you will finish up with the shape that you see here. So you want to make sure that when you're stuffing it, that um, you've um, really stuffed it fairly tightly. You want to put probably a little more in than you think you should um, because, you know, as they get snuggled and hugged, that fiber feel is going to get a little compressed. So you want to make sure you're kind of overstuffing them just a little bit. Um, but basically for this pattern, if you can do that um, single crochet two together to decrease and um, work that process of single crochet um, two in the same stitch to increase, that's pretty much all you need to successfully complete this little guy. Um, because you're going to be using those same steps for all of the following pieces. So um, if you go to the next piece in your pattern, it tells you um, that the tail and feet are next and you're gonna make one in the main color for the tail and four in a contrast color for the feet, but it's exactly the same um, piece for each one of those. So again, you'll start with that um, magic ring for these pieces. So you'll wrap that twice using the black and then pull up a loop and then just follow the same instructions. So you're going to work six single crochets in the ring.
and then pull that closed. And then you'll just carry on as you did for the body. And then once you've done that, you'll have some feet. And they just look just like this. It's the same concept, they're just smaller pieces. And you'll have four of those. And then you'll also do one in the white. So you have your four feet and a tail. Um, for the um, head, which has got a little bit of a different method for increasing. So I'll just go over that with you really quickly. But you're going to take these feet and uh, the tail piece and you'll put those to the side for when you're ready to seam. So the next piece is going to be the head. And for the head, we're doing something just a little bit different. So it may be a good idea for this piece to have um, locking ring markers in two different colors. Um, so you can mark the beginning of your round with one color, and then you're gonna mark the place where you do the increase on the opposite side in a second color. So I'm just gonna start that. So we're gonna start again with that magic ring. Pull up your loop. Hi, Hattie. Yeah. Uh, so Dolly asked, when you say the same concept as the body, do you mean filling it as you go with the feet? You do. And um, I'll actually um, show you that in just a moment. I just wanted to show you when you start this, you're still going to use those two single crochets um, to do your increases but you're going to mark the beginning with one and then you're going to single crochet three and then for the next one you'll just pop a different color into this stitch and that's going to indicate not only the beginning of your round and a place for increase but also on the other side this marks where your increase will be so just like we did before you'll just follow the instructions and move the pieces as you go um, and once you do that you'll get to your head here which i've already um, done a small version of that and you can see this will be the same concept as for the body. So as you continue to work around the body of the sheep, that opening will get smaller and smaller. So this is the time when you want to finish stuffing your sheep. So you just take some of the fiber fill there and pull some of that out. And then before you close this up, you're going to just add your stuffing. So once you've stuffed him to the size you prefer, um, this is a really great, great section where you can customize what your little sheep looks like. You can um, add rounds or change the colors at a different rate to get um, a different look. But um, when you get to the end, you're going to have um, three single crochets left. So then your pattern tells you to um, cut your yarn and then pull it through the three remaining. So I just wanted to show you a little bit about that. Um, once you're ready to do that, you're gonna leave a long tail that you can use for seaming, and you're gonna fasten off in that last stitch. So if you just draw that up a little bit to make the hole a little bigger, and then you'll pull that tail in through and just fasten that off. So then I'm going to thread that onto my tapestry needle. And an easy way to do that is to just hold your tapestry needle and then fold the yarn over the tapestry needle and then give it a pinch just under the end. So if you can see there. And then as you pull that through, you're going to keep that pinch and just push that through the eye of the needle. And then you can just 
slide it right through. So it looks like maybe the eye might be too small, but it's really not. You really got um, plenty of space there to pull that chenille through. So when you get to the end and you have them stuffed the way you like, you're just gonna um, take your yarn and pull it through each one of the remaining stitches. And then just draw it up just like you did with the magic ring. And so it's nice and closed up and you've got your um, tail left and you're just gonna take that tail and um, maybe put a little fray check on the end there just to secure it. And then you can weave that into your sheep. So just a really easy way to do that is to, um, to just push it through the top of the sheep and just have it come out anywhere on the side. And then you're gonna pull that tightly so when you pull it, then you can cut this, put a little fray check on the end, and then it'll just pop back in to the top. And you've got your little piece for your head. Um, so the next thing to do here is to give your sheep some personality. Um, so I've written the pattern here for the ears. So um, you can just follow along with that. You're just going to make two flat pieces of single crochet like this. And then you seam those onto your little sheep right here. Um, but first you want to give them a face. So I've already got this piece um, on my tapestry needle and that's how I made his little face here, his little mouth. Um, so, and it looks a little more complicated than it is maybe, but um, you're just going to go into the sheep with that end. And then you'll go back in the same spot you started and you kind of think about it um, sort of as a triangle. So it'll have three points. So you have the section where you go in and then you pull out and then you go back in that same spot and then come out at the base of your triangle. Hey Hattie, we have another great question from Marlene. Yeah. She asked, how often or at what point do we apply fray check? Every time we cut the yarn? Um, that's, it's up to you. Um, for me, if I'm doing a piece like this and I know I'm going to bury the end in the sheep, I don't bother with it. Um, I just go ahead and, um, and push it in through the um, body part as I'm seaming. And then I don't worry about the fray check. And that gives you his little nose and you can play around with the shaping there. But for this piece, um, I might not even do a knot at all. I might leave him on here and just where I came out with the, the yarn, just snip that off and then let it fall back in. Just like that. So that makes his little nose and his mouth. So then all you have left to do is to do the eyes. I kind of have a short piece here, but I'm gonna um, use it anyway, because I think it'll help you get the idea. But for his eyes, it's really just one stitch. If you can see here, it's one stitch. I'm just gonna go into the sheep here, actually, I'm going to go up a little further up so I can leave that tail buried. And then I'm going to work kind of at an angle 
and go in probably the base of one of those single crochet rows and go back into the piece. And you can do that one time or a couple of times. This is really where you get to make um, the sheep your own. If you want his eyes to be a little more prominent, you can go a few times. And then just bury that end in. Hey, Hattie, I just wanted to let you know we have 10 minutes left in the class. Okay. Also, Callie asked if you had any tricks to making the magic ring. She says it never works for her. Um, I have um, had problems with that myself, as we all do when we try a new technique. So I don't always um, even do the two loops. It depends on the yarn I'm working with, but um, you can even do that if I use, um, I have a piece of contrasting or yarn in a coordinating color that's just a smooth yarn. This is what I'd use for seaming and I think you can maybe see what I'm saying here. So if you hold the tail with this yarn and you wrap it once um, and pull it through, you've essentially done all the steps just to make a basic slip knot. So a magic ring isn't really um, much more than the slip knot. So if you hold here, you see if I wrap twice for the magic ring, I've essentially just made a slip knot that I'm gonna continue to work into. So you're gonna chain here, and then you'll go in and work in the ring. So if you just think about it as, um, as another version of a slip knot, I think it makes it a little easier to work with. Um, but then you just give that a tug. But the reason I don't always do too is because sometimes you'll get that little extra loop, but you just play around with it until you get it to close up. So it just takes a little practice. Um, but since we're getting toward the end, I just want to make sure I give you a couple little tips about, um, about seaming with chenille. Um, you can use this to sew your pieces together, um, but it can sometimes be a challenge. Um, so having that smooth waist yarn in a coordinating color is a really good idea to make seaming just a little bit easier. Um, so for his eyes here, Let's see, thread that through. Cause you gotta give him a little life, you know, you can't just have the wide eyes. You gotta give him a little pupil. So I'm just gonna go across that white. We have another question. Sure. Uh, this, uh, this person asked, when you bury the tail, can you pull the eye out because it's not anchored? Just wondering about giving it to a child. Um, you definitely, if you're making this for yourself just because you love yarn <laughs> and you want to have it for something you display or it's just um, something to play with yourself um, or have on your desk um, or your bed, then I, I wouldn't worry about it so much. But anything I'm doing for a child, I would want to pay a little more attention to. Um, that's precisely why we use the yarn for um, doing the face on this sheet because we didn't want to add any snaps or buttons and even safety eyes sometimes can be, um, could be a potential hazard. So if you have the yarn, even if it comes out, it, you know, if you cut your pieces, maybe a little smaller. So if a piece were to be pulled out, it wouldn't be a problem. Um, but I would do more to secure it. So I might start with um, more of a knot, for instance, when I'm doing this. I would um, just tie a knot in the end of that waist yarn. Pull it through. And then you can actually work through the fiber. I would probably have a little sharper tapestry needle too to make that easier, but you can work through the fiber. And then as you pull that through, you have that knot that makes it a little more secure. So I, I would think about that depending on what, what your, your sheep's um, final purpose is gonna be. 
Okay. Um, and then you would trim any ends or weave in any loose ends that you have here. And then you're going to use this same waist yarn um, in the smooth yarn so that you can seam pieces on, like the ears, for instance, I would do that same knot. And then it's gonna be a little bit of um, just placement. You would wanna weave in these ends, but you're gonna go into the um, head of the sheep here. And then you can just do a simple whip stitch, if you can see that. And you'll notice that when I do that, you, um, you can't even see where that waist yarn was. If you work into that same color, you can really hide the ends. Um, but you'll use that to do all of your seaming. And this one doesn't look as cute as this guy because I've, you know, the ears in the wrong place, but <laughs> you'll do a better job at home and he'll look more like this one. So once you've completed the head and made your face and given him his little personality, you'll sew that onto the body and then you'll just um, use the same whip stitch to secure the legs on the sheep and then also with the tail. Were there any other questions, Stacy? Is there anything else I can, um, I can answer for anybody? I think we're good. We have a lot of thank yous in the chat. They love the sheep. They think it's really cute. Great. Um, we really appreciate everyone that has uh, come to this class today. And if you want to take any of our other I Love Yarn Day classes, there's still time to sign up on uh, michaels.com slash classes. I wanted to thank Hattie and Premier Yarns for doing this class with us. Um, yeah. I, I will. Hattie, thanks do you have any? Us. Yeah. <laughs> th thanks, for, thanks for being here, everyone. We'll see you in the next class. All right. Bye-bye. <laughs>